This is the story of why I changed this. This. <laughs> Should be fun. To start things off, I love this. It does 90% of what this gigantic pedal board does, but there's a reason I'm absolutely loving the new setup and why I've left this behind at the moment. Since using the RC300, I've absolutely loved the pedal, but there's been one problem, and that is every show I set up the RC300 out of its case on its own. Then I set up a pedal board and I have to link two control pedals, a mic switcher into the RC300 before connecting my guitar into everything and it just takes a lot of time, it's messy, it's a lot of extra setup for every show. So look what arrived today. What is it? What's in the box? I don't know. Can you help me undo it? Yeah. Should we get in? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do you think it is? Yeah. What is it? What could be inside a box as big as you? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what do you think it is? Music. Music. <laughs> yeah, music here. Choice. Can you get it? Wow. <laughs> Can you lift it? <laughs> Help! <laughs> well, it's quite big. New pedal board. What we're going to do today is I'm going to take the RC300, my old little pedal board, put them all onto one thing, uh, link it up, add in these two pedals, and I will have a brand new mothership looping rig. is super super tough I don't have amazing drill bits and the drills run out of battery so uh, in the meantime let's get to velcroing current countdown to my gig is uh, three hours and so far power supply is not installed just the RC300 is stuck to the uh, board right now that's it did not go as smoothly as I hoped. I am down uh, one delay pedal at the moment, but I've got it rigged up. I need to leave in about 20 minutes for my gig, and I'm just gonna do a line check just to check that everything I've plugged in is working. I've just set it up. I'll be honest, it's been a little bit stressful. I'm bagging up now, but I will go through uh, pedals for you tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm filming this on tour, and uh, I wanted to, I feel very lucky that we're on tour, that we're traveling around playing shows again. It really does feel magic. Uh, but I wanted to do a full rundown We'll go through the signal path, we'll go through what I use each effect for, why I have these loop triggers and, and control pedals attached into the RC300. So let's go through the signal chain firstly, and then I'll give some demos of what each pedal is doing and how it's rigged for you. Okay, I've had coffee now. <laughs> the signal chain goes into the chromatic tuner. Um, it then goes across to the TC Helicon Spark little boost pedal into both of the octave pedals. I'll explain in a bit why I have two. There's a reason for it. Then back to 
the uh, Tumnus Overdrive, the full tone overdrive into the Walrus Fuzz Pedal and Envelope Filter, which is what that is, into the Delay and into the RC300, which then goes out to the main desk. Let's start with the looping aspect and then I will go through and play kick on and off each of the pedals so you can actually hear what they do and, and maybe a little bit about how I use them. Um, to start with, I typically would build a, a track, a guitar track, um, a rhythm groove track on track one. Uh, same as before with the Voice Live 3 and then what happens at the moment this mic switching pedal, at the moment my mic is designed to go straight into the desk and that's that blue light, that signal is going out to channel 2 on the, the mic switcher but straight into the desk so my mic won't get looped but hitting that button now means this is coming through my guitar channel. So now when I build a groove, this mic is going to be included on the guitar channel in the loop. Let's see if I can hit these pedals. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> okay, we made it. Maybe not the greatest, I'm dancing around here. Now, hitting that switcher pedal means if I record, if I overdub, nothing from the mic is going in. So at the moment it's guitar signal and I'm not playing anything, so overdub doesn't affect anything. So that's that one. Let's just put something down so we... Uh, So let's say that's, and I'm, I'm just going to add super simple bass. So we can hear that, and let's just for fun now, I'm going to just build a track so I can use these um, pedals down here. But <laughs> what do we got? See you in the moment. So we'll just put in. Okay, something simple. This is a little envelope filter. In case we haven't discussed that on the video, this is now, I'm recording part of this another few days after walking you through the, uh, the map of it. But now, what I've got is this first uh, loopy pedal down here. I don't need this anymore, I'm not using it. Um, if I have a break and I don't want that little skank, that little... Yeah, this is going to start tracks one and two together. Nice. Awesome. It's also going to stop them. And if everything was playing, and I just wanted a breakdown that just went to track three. That actually stops one and two together. It just saves me a little bit of tap dancing on the RC300. Back in. So moving on to the next one, this second little control pedal. And I've mapped them all running into the Boss RC300. You can go and assign what these do. This one, the second one, is uh, tracks one and three together. So often I will build a song with the groove staying the same on track one. That's the rhythm part. No chords, no bass, nothing like that. Track two might be a complete song where I build the chords, the bass, any other parts into it. Track three might also be a complete song or a bridge or something like that. So I can actually start one and three together just in a nice hit. Or it could be 
make this for a breakdown but still with the rhythm and then later I'll add in and fill it out again. Uh, this third one is not assigned to anything, nice and easy, and on the end there, that will delete tracks one, two, and three. So that's my basic looping setup, uh, how I'm running things, in case you're wondering what all these extra controls are. But let's go through now the pedals, just so you can hear what they actually do, as opposed to me just talking about it. This little spark, literally use it, I think, pretty much the same as Carl described. If I'm using a pick, there's a certain volume compared to when I just use fingers. And it's more noticeable if I'm strumming to when I switch to a finger picking piece. So I will kick this on, it adds a little bit of boost, uh, that's not a boost, it's just a dB gain, a clean dB gain to my signal so that now when I'm playing a, a f finger style, I get a little bit more, uh, just a touch more volume to be closer to the level my strumming's at. It's, it's super subtle, so if you don't pick it up on this video, that's okay. Now, octave number one, the super octave, which is the OC3. I, there's been a lot of confusion. Why do I have two octave pedals? Well, they do the same thing, but I have set them differently, okay? So, this one I've set, oh, which actually at the moment is very interestingly set. <laughs> I've set it so that I get bass and guitar. Often when I build up a big loop and I come down to a slow section, I want to be able to play a chord, have that bass there, as well as the chord, so it still feels like a really full sound as opposed to just a guitar. The second one, this second one, the octave, the OC5 that I recently bought, is purely set to an octave. So when I'm looping, That's my bass sound. You'll hear a bit of guitar coming through and I have it set so there's actually a touch of the guitar um, when I play a bass line. Just, uh, it's, it's the equivalent of me wanting to EQ and add some high end if I just had a bass player. Uh, is essentially what I've tried to do by adding a little bit of the um, guitar signal still coming through. But it means that's still all got an octave to it, the whole range of the guitar. From there, if we keep going around the chain, uh, we come to the Wampler uh, Tumnus, which I use as, oh, I'm gonna bump things here, it's, uh, roughly back to where we were. I'd use this for something like, um, actually often when I'm actually playing a full full chord so we get so that's my um, overdriven sound when I'm actually playing full chords and it's got a little bit more gain it's got a different tone to the full drive but I do also use it as a lead sound from time to time. Okay, full drive. This I use mostly as a lead sound. And I like it. 
it somehow, I don't know, I feel like it gets a lot more sustain uh, in my um, in my playing, however it's wired and rigged up, but it also has a boost so I can um, just add, again it's set very subtly, but just add even a little bit more uh, into that lead. It's a very, a lot of my stuff is acoustic, you guys have seen and heard me play um, at this point, I think, so um, I don't use really heavy um, sounds in the most part. Um, but that's what I typically use and often both of them will be with this little digital delay so that my... Uh just uh, I, I change the settings on the delay a little bit depending on what I'm doing but we'll get to that we'll move through the chain in order for once for you on the end this uh, this was a fun purchase I just wanted to try the pedal to be honest the fuzz is so filthy and I don't use it much it was designed as a lead tone but if you've been playing acoustic guitar this this suddenly feels nasty compared to a clean acoustic guitar sound. because it has an envelope filter as well suddenly this is kind of I like this tone um, it subdues that really harsh um, fuzz sound and it can be cool to build into loops to fatten up a chorus or a section just to have some A different sound, a different tone in the mix. So it's essentially for my enjoyment, for fun. Um, I do use just the envelope filter for some. Uh, uh, let's for some sort of funk stuff. Hey, we got this. Just get rid of that. Um, <laughs> me saying that, if possible. There we go. So um, again, subtle sound, but just a little bit of a different change. So uh, So I might use it to build up some sort of uh, funk groove and then I also use it oftentimes for uh, a solo uh, sound. fun times. Um, the, uh, the downside is I don't have a, um, a pedal switcher or anything at this point so I am hitting each thing individually to combine sounds that I want. But moving on from the Kangaroo we then in the signal chain come to this delay. Uh, I have the delay on the RC300 as my effect. <laughs> I love that it's synced with whatever timing of groove I use. So the RC300 will typically be less of a delay how I have it set than this. And so I've got essentially options of two delays by having by having them both set up. So that I think covers my little rig rundown. Um, it's nice to kind of finally share it. I, if enough of you want 
I will share how I've got the Boss RC300 set up, but I think in terms of the settings and you know what's locked in time or if it's free or all that sort of stuff, I think most of that's you're already using it, there's a bunch of videos out there, but obviously get in touch if you're stuck or want to know what I'm doing. Uh, it's all pretty straightforward. So um, we've got another show tomorrow, so I'm going to put this all together and copy some footage into a video and, and um, put that together. And then in the meantime, I think now that this is all rigged up on our day off, I am going to play around with a... Uh, a few new, new little tunes that I'm, I'm super excited about doing some some loop versions I was playing before. Anyway, enough of me talking. Thanks for tuning in. Feel free to reach out if you've got any questions. I will link all of this uh, in the description below to some website wherever I can find because I know some of the pedals uh, aren't around. But that way, if you're not sure what specific pedal I was talking about, there'll be a link so you can actually find it and learn more about it and see if it might be fun to include on your board. The last thing I should mention is this, everything is powered by a Strymon Zoomer uh, power supply. So I have a few daisy chains running um, other, and some things are individual. But apart from the Boss RC300 which is still running on its own power supply. So, there you go, it's been a bit of a build, a massive shift from the little Voice Live 3 with an octave pedal sitting next to it, which was mostly what's happening, but I am absolutely loving this setup. And now that I've got my head around the Boss RC300 and I'm using it for all the live shows, this is my rig now, I look forward to doing some videos and showing you how I'm using it and we'll do some arrangements some of, of some of the songs I've been working on as well. So, nice to be back. Uh, I will have fun touring and feel free to connect and say hi with all your pedalboard questions. Ciao.